Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Monday, September 16th, 2013, 7 p.m. Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, I'd like to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then immediately following, I would like to stop and have a moment of silence for the horrific tragedy today in Washington, D.C. at the Navy Yard. Um, we've lost at least six of our fellow Americans. Um, so uh, a moment of silence for them and their families. And then also a moment of silence for Rena Berthelet, who passed away last week. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we have uh, Rena Berthelet um, passed away last week. And for those who aren't aware that her and her husband donated the parcel of property to allow the entrance to the um, Millville Elementary School. So the town is very grateful to the Berthelets and the board wishes to offer their sincere condolences to the family and their loved ones. Uh, the, the board canceled the coffee with the selectmen, which was scheduled for this past Saturday, September 14th, from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Chestnut Hill Community Center. We will post a new date on the cable access channel once, once that has been determined. We apologize for the inconvenience. And the Centennial Celebration kickoff event will take place on Sunday, September 29th, beginning at 11 a.m. on the grounds of both the Longfellow Municipal Center and the Veterans Memorial Park. The rain date is the following Sunday, October 6th. <clears throat> the purpose of the kick kickoff event is to bring awareness to the town's upcoming 100th anniversary in 2016 and kick off the fundraising to take, pl <clears throat> to take place over the next couple of years in order <clears throat> Excuse me. Couple. Of, whoop, how did I lose my place? Not used to glasses yet. <laughs> in order to fund a big celebration in, on May, in May of 2016, the kickoff event will include various groups for providing live music on the Longfellow grounds, as well as a DJ playing at the Veterans Memorial Park. Other planned items include a magic show, clown, bouncy houses dunk tank, public safety vehicles and, and on display, and activities for small children. This is a family-friendly community event. Centennial t-shirts are still on sale and are available at the police station Monday through Friday from 9 to 3. A variety of additional sizes are now available. The cost is $12. The sale of the t-shirts will help to raise funds for the 100th celebration. T-shirts will also be, be available during the kickoff event. Uh, next, we have approval of minutes and warrants for September 3rd, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. Motion, motion to accept the minutes of the meeting of September 3rd at 6.30. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Next, we have uh, September 3rd again, 2013. Motion to accept September 3rd, uh, 2013, 7.30 p.m. Meeting. Second that as well. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Now we have reports of, of town officials, and tonight we have the Historical Commission. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's nice to see each of you and be able to. Uh, it is nice to see you and be able to give you a little update, a little background maybe on the historical commission. Uh, I don't want to be redundant, so I try to bring up something that you may not have 
been aware of. The first is that the uh, Massachusetts, the Millville Historical Commission comes under Massachusetts General, General Law, Chapter 40, Section D. So we are guided by, by the uh, dictates of that particular chapter and uh, section. And we have to refer to it from time to time. And if anybody would like copies of it, we'd be very happy to uh, provide them. Now, the other thing is, and this something comes up uh, several times during the year, what is the difference between the commission, uh, historical commission and the historical society? I try to say that there is a very vast distinction. A, a historical society is a social, as a society is social. It's a private organization. Very often it would take on the name of the town. It could be the, like Oxford Historical Society, the Mendon Historical Society. But it, does not have, it doesn't come under any of the, the regulations of the, of the town. And the Historical Commission is appointed by the board, and we are, we are governed by the bylaws and uh, all of the policies and procedures of the town. So that is the difference between the commission and the society. And then another one, and this is very brief, what is the difference between a National Historic, historic Register District and a, and a Historic District? Again, there is a vast difference. A historic district in a town first has to be formed through an article on a warrant, and then it becomes part of the town government. And again, it comes under the purview of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, they, they set their own rules and regulations, and that is a, that is a historic district is the, the one that, uh, in some instances, say people say, oh, they dictate what you're going to do with your house. You can only paint it a certain color, or you can't do, put this kind of a roof on it. That is a historic district uh, commission, and Millville does not have one. And uh, if I was ever advised, I suggest that you not have one, <laughs> because uh, restrictions are not easy to, uh, to put on residents. Uh, and then, uh, so I wanted to do that. Then a report on our past achievements. We, and we were asked a few years back by the Mass Historical Commission to put together the things that we had accomplished. So we came up with a three-page uh, package of what the, the uh, commission has accomplished. And again, if any of you would like copies of this, and just let me know, and we have them in our files. And I want to say, anytime I speak for the Historical Commission, I speak for its past members as well as its present members. We had valuable uh, uh, talent and time uh, provided for, by those early organizers and those who followed. And many of the incidents that are listed here, and there are many, uh, were done not by current members, but by past members. Uh, now, on our file uh, uh, agenda for this year, I had mentioned earlier, is that we're developing a file on the Chestnut Hill section of Millville, which is not very, it's not the easiest thing to do. We have to go back into the old records of Mendon and Blackstone. But Emil Berthelet has put together a diorama of Millville in 1887. And I, don't, I haven't heard of any town around that has one. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Every single building uh, and every uh, stream and river, uh, there's only one river, is on that diorama. And uh, I'll speak a little bit more about that. But that, that's what I mean about the individual contributions that the members make. It, it, it's really unusual. Then uh, we're working for the completion of the honor rolls for the Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Afghanistan, Iraq. And I have to admit, we had a flurry of responses to our first letters, and now it has stopped. We, uh, we do not have, uh, we have not had a big response. So we, had, we voted at the last meeting that we're simply going to start, we won't have an official honor roll for each war, but we're going to list the names of those as they come in. And perhaps that will generate more interest and so I'm appealing to the veterans or their families. Of, and we, have a, we sent them out to every family we could identify. And there is a, a form, again, which we'd be happy to mail to them or deliver to them. And uh, it's, it's, not, it's just a one-page form. And again, anybody would like to see it, uh, it's there. Uh, now it's the ongoing display of historic documents. and, a histo and we have a new one to unveil, and we're going to do that the week of the 29th. We have 
uh, two uh, collages in large frames done of Millville, I would say early 1900s. I'm going to say almost 1900 to 1916. There, there are pictures of vi uh, 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 structures in Millville that are long gone, views of the streets that will make you smile and want to say, I never knew it looked like that. Wonderful. And so that is our latest uh, acquisition, and we're always welcome. We have to be very ca careful about accepting uh, donations because we, we bring the people in and show them. Th this was from Richard Collett, who was originally from Millville and now is from Northbridge. We had Mr. Collett come into the building to see the limited space there is for displays so that he would understand that, uh, that we, we, we only have a limited space. So, if we get a flurry of, of, of photographs in, people would have to understand that those might go into an album rather than up on the wall. Uh, now we come to the landscape considerations. We have the old Town Hall Park site, and that comes, I know Helen, that comes under the current landscape uh, contract. That's right on the main street, and it's worthwhile. And we, are, we said at our last meeting, we'd like to meet with Helen to go over some, some minor changes that have to be done. Some of the uh, trees have grown too big, and then the shrubs are almost now getting out of hand. But, uh, and then we have the Bannigan City site. Now, people just, the, the, word, the two words, Bannigan City, rolls off the tongue of people who have lived in Millville all of their lives. To other people, it is nothing. To the national, to the national public, it's worth. It's, it's, there's a book out on it. I should have. I should have brought it in. Joseph Bannigan was a great labor leader in the uh, early, uh, early 19, late 1800s, and he actually, his company was second only to Goodrich in the pub, uh, production of rubber, and half of that was done in the town of Millville. People don't understand the largest strike ever held. In, in this, whole, well, in the Commonwealth was held um, at the U U.S. Rubber Company. He's, and he, Joseph Bannigan, built 18 houses over at the end of Prospect and Hope Street, and he, he de developed Prospect and Hope Street. There were no, those streets did not exist. And he chose very positive names for them, the Prospect of the Future and the Hope of the Future. Then he joined them by Washington Street, because he said there was a Lincoln Street in town, but there was no Washington Street. So that's a very, a very historical little uh, section of our town, and it's always picked up by people who come in from out of town to look at, at the surveys. Uh, then he built the Bannigan City School, which was a two-room schoolhouse. He donated the land, and he donated the money for the school. And then that, when that was torn down uh, in uh, the 1944, it, laid, it just was there. But those of us who went to school there knew it. And there's a beautiful set of steps that, go, that, that are layered going from Prospect up and then up some more and then up some more right up to the level. And that's where the Eagle Scout Ryan Fish did a uh, set up a park-like setting. Uh, so we, we're going to work to see if we can bring more attention to that. But th that does not come under the landscape. And that takes me to volunteer work. If we only had a volunteer work we, once in the spring and once in the, in the fall, and people would just go to designated sites with their rakes and their saws, it would all be done. But um, that, that we only have that done twice a year. Um, and, th and then we have, and you would go by it today and not know what was there. That was done with two of the selectmen and the members of the Historical Commission. The Grand Trunk Railroad runs through Millville um, right where the parking lot is at the top of the hill. Right, right beyond that is the bed of the, the actual bed of the Grand Trunk Railroad. And the, the two abutments that the railroad would cross Central Street, it was going to be a high speed railroad, the only one in New England, with no grade crossings. They would all be elevated. So the abutments are there where the train would have gone over Central Street. We have three other very important uh, remnants of the Grand Trunk Railroad. So we cleared out the section between, right before Baisley Avenue, between mm -hmm. the parking lot and Baisley Avenue. We spent a, a whole weekend there, and a couple came up with bad cases of poison ivory, mm -hmm. but we, we, and people donated uh, some shrubs. Now it's totally overgrown, and we really need to have, and that's another one of those volunteer days 
we had volunteers to go in there and, and uh, selectively clear, it would, not open, it would not open up that little streetscape, but it would also open up the abutment of that historic railroad. So uh, those are the things that we work on. And then uh, the, the UDOT's Howard site is just perfect, but we noticed that, and Helen and I have talked about that, there are a couple of shrubs that are really, they've, they've, um, I think they're gonna to have to be taken out. And our concern is if they're taken out, it's going to open up that site again, and pretty soon somebody will be parking. So we have to decide what kind of shrubs that will be, and we'd be very happy to work with you on that, Helen. And the other thing is, of course, we're always we're faced with lack of funding. For we have four hundred dollars to work with, and uh, we do. We are grateful to the. Uh, uh, the Cultural Council who have been generous to us in the past. And that takes me to the one uh, sheet I wanted to give you, and I think it's still upstairs. Uh, right out here in front, uh, when we had our first study done, it was determined that there were five historic periods in, right here on this site, starting with the 1667 and coming right up to 200, 2013. There is a site to represent each of those five peri historical periods. And I say they're etched in stone. Because the first one is that uh, 1727 gristmill stone. It's there. It proves that there was a gristmill right here at the river, and it's etched in stone. And then we found the, the it wasn't the cornerstone, but one of the, uh, one of the, the Base of, basis of the Longfellow School, and we had, the Historical Commission had that engraved 1850. So we have a 1727, we have a 1850 stone, then we have a 1890 uh, is another period, and that is the Udor Tower itself. And then it comes up into, the, so what do we have for the 1940s? Well, at 1940 to, to something. We have the, the, other, the other school, the, the, uh, the annex, which later became the police station. And we're looking on the grounds here to see if we can find the, a proper stone on which we could have uh, Longfellow Annex and the date of that, which was 1967. And then also to be included in that period of time was the year that the whole, this whole area, uh, schoolyard, was completely changed. At one time, the schoolyard area ended right at the bottom of these steps. There was a fence that went along there. And on the other side was a space and a road that went into houses out in the back. And during the WPA time, when they put men to work, they, uh, they took the road out, they tore all the houses down, and they extended the schoolyard out that far and put up, if you get on the other side, you'll see the stone wall that they put up there which was a massive uh, undertaking. And then the little uh, area out in front with its cement is a, is a sign of the WPA days. And the same, fit, the same wall runs across uh, uh, at the Udaw Tower. So we have something for every one of the historic periods. In the, and I left one out, the uh, 1900s. Upstairs is a 1925 uh, header, this granite stone that came from the first business block that was built in Millville, and that was the King Block. And it's, it's engraved, King, King 1925. So we would like to have that moved, and with your approval, we would have a collection of all of those historic periods, really etched in stone, right in front of the building. So we, uh, that might be our next grant application to the Cultural Council to see if they would help us because uh, we can't spend our $400 yeah. in October, and then it's gone for the rest of the year. And then, on our, again, on our agenda, we still have the walking tour for the, uh, and, that, and the raceway and the Blackstone Canal cleanup. And that takes me to the open meeting law, which is a very valid and very important law, but it certainly, puts, it certainly holds you up. Yeah. If you only meet once a month, and you have, you have different ones from the committee reporting. You have to wait a whole month to report because it isn't, e either, it isn't always easy to get people back together. And you can't just say, well, let's, get, let's <clears throat> meet out in front of the school. If three of us meet, it's an, it's an, we're, we're violating the open meeting law. So those are the things that really uh, 
uh, I have a lot of good to do, but uh, some restrictions. We have to find a way to, uh, I don't mean get around it, but a way to handle it. Mm -hmm. So it's fine, and then we have the raceway and the Blackstone Canal cleanup. Mm -hmm. That's another one. We have to go, we met on Tuesday, and Wednesday I met with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Conservation Commission. We have to fill out a form. Now we have to wait till our next meeting. Uh, to have it acted on, then we have to wait for the conservation to approve it. By that time, it's going to be almost December, and we will have not started the project that we wanted to do in the fall. Uh, so, some way, if anybody has any suggestions as to how we can get, uh, I don't say around them, we're not trying to bend the open meeting law, but we have to have, have be able to have a random meeting occasionally. That's what I would say. And then you mentioned the, the uh, Centennial, the Historic Commission has, has, uh, uh, is asking permission to use the building from 12 to two, uh, no, two, 12 to 2. And we would like to open this room because there is the history of Millwood done by the hands of women who did that quilt. And uh, we'd like to bring uh, Emil's uh, diorama down here so people can see it. Mm -hmm. We would like to offer the veterans room for people to see and then tours, if you would call it, of the front yard. And we don't know yet about the, we'd like to open the classroom too. And that will be done, we have the volunteers who have, willing, who have said they would come in and uh, man their posts for, uh, for that. Okay. Uh, and so that's as fast as I could make it. Yeah, and okay. uh, I hope it's, uh, it's complete. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? I don't know. Not at all. No. And, uh, but if you want any copies of these, yeah. the, the one, especially in Massachusetts general law, that would be a good one to read. And so maybe you'll find it in your, your uh, package one of these days. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, thank you me. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the fall season. Thanks, you too. Next, we have the first public forum. Correspondence. Helen, would you cover it in your report, Timothy McLaughlin, or is that? Okay, so those of you who know that Millville is very proud to have sent a uh, young man to uh, West Point this year, T.J. McLaughlin, Jr. Um, so on August 17th was acceptance day and uh, up at West Point that they featured a parade of the entire Corps, <coughs> Corps of Cadets, on the Plain West Point's primary parade grounds. The traditional marches played by West Point's outstanding military band, the, the class of 2017 takes the field wearing their new white caps signifying um, completion of their cadet basic training, also known as Beast Barracks. Um, so it's quite an accomplishment. There's a very long, lengthy three-page uh, description of what he's been up to and what he's going to do. Um, anybody interested in it, it is at the town hall. Um, I have attended those ceremonies as, as a kid when I lived in New York, and um, it is quite a, quite a uh, thing to see uh, West Point and um, all the stuff that they do. And it, it's really amazing, and the, and the, uh, the dedication of the young men and women at uh, that go to that, and, uh, and and they're doing it for the well-being of this country. It's really amazing. So congratulations to him and his family. Uh, and that is all I really have for announcements. My correspondence. Unless somebody else has something else. Uh, we have next uh, appointments and resignation. We have two resignations, um, sadly, um, but very understandable, from the count, uh, from the uh, 100th centennial celebration. It's Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Bowen, Robert, and Ellen. Um, Mr. Bowen writes a letter, um, or maybe Mrs. Bowen, I don't know who, so. Uh, I don't want to take the credit away from either one. Very nice letter. After much thought, we, we have made a decision to submit our resignation as members of the M Millville Centennial Committee. Due to recent family illness, 
coupled with, with the fact <clears throat> that we are active members on the Council on Aging, contribute many hours of volunteer work at the Senior Center, we find we are unable to devote the time needed to provide activities and planning on the Centennial Board. We will be happy to assist committee members in their future endeavors, but feel to but feel to retain the two seats on this board without the ability or time to devote 100% is a detriment to the board's progress. Chairman Keith and Jen Dean Wing, along with the present committee, are to, are to be commended for their diligent work in planning the town's 100th celebration. It is with great, it is with regret that we find it necessary to convey in, our decision to resign at this time, but feel it appropriate as it will afford other uh, town residents an opportunity to consider submitting their names for appointment consideration, allowing them to the opportunity to add their efforts on behalf of the town of Millville. Thank you for your vote of confidence in us affecting, uh, affecting our uh, appointment a year ago. So, uh, well, we motion. Yep. Motion to accept the resignation of Robert Bowen and Tom Bowen from the Millville Centennial Committee. Second. Second. Okay, and again, thank you very much for all your efforts, and also thank you for all the hard work you do at the Senior Center, and uh, it does not go un unnoticed. So thank you very much. Um, next, we have the Executive Secretary's report which I'm sure is gonna be nice and short for it us. It is. Um, I just want to give you a, a brief um, update as to what's going on in the basement here at the town hall. Mm -hmm. As you all know, um, recently we found um, a black mold situation. The insurance company is covering the mold remediation project up to $25,000. Um, the contractor was sent in, chosen by the insurance company, removed the wall board, carpeting, um, you know some of the studs um, and did some cleaning they sent OSHA back in to do some testing and unfortunately OSHA found that there was still mold um, in the room including the air and on some of the files um, we then contacted the state discussed the situation with the state um, the records retention department they told us to you know, get rid of any files that we needed to get rid of, just keep an inventory and let them know after the fact as to what we needed to dispose of. Okay. So the contractor was sent back in, we went back downstairs, um, and last week they disposed of the majority of the files that had the severe mold, um, and that I felt as though weren't really something that the town had to absolutely keep. There are still some files that we did keep that do have mold, but I didn't feel as though we, we should get rid of those. Um, so they are uh, coming back in tomorrow to take away their equipment um, at 10 a.m. and OSHA is coming back in at 11 to do another round of testing, okay. including the air. Um, so we'll have a better idea as to where we stand uh, once that testing is done. Okay. So that's where we stand on that. Um, if you recall, um, gosh, probably over a year ago, we had a meeting up at the elementary school with um, the school committee and the school administration, and we discussed primarily the roof project and structural issues at the time, but there were several other um, issues and, and items that we had discussed with respect to preventative maintenance and kind of who was doing what. And those were some things that were um, included on the agenda that we had hoped to discuss a couple of weeks ago, unfortunately, the water situation took up all of that time. But I didn't know if the board was um, interested in scheduling a meeting with the school committee to discuss some of these items or how you wanted to handle that. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to address, especially the HVAC part where we're not, we've closed off all the fresh air intake. Right, yeah, that, well, that was one of the items. <laughs> That's on a the big agenda. issue, yeah. Um, you know, I, would, I would make a motion for the, for the secretary to schedule the meeting with the uh, school committee. Okay, thank so you. We, we a second? Get, I'll second that. Get some dates. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 
And I also wanted to just bring to the board's attention, and um, this actually has been sitting on my desk for a few months. Um, one of the board members had suggested that we complete the work request form um, for the animal control vehicle um, to have some, um, I think, body work done on that. So the animal control officer did complete the form as requested. However, in my discussions with him, um, he's very leery about actually having the work done because when you send a vehicle off to BVT, they actually keep it for quite a long time and it actually says here right on the application um, that the municipal property has to be left for repairs or alterations um, for as long as you know they need. Um, so he had some concerns because without that vehicle here they would have no means to deal with the animal situation. So I didn't know how the board um, wanted me to handle this. Um, now that school is back in session, yeah. um, I just need some direction on what you'd like me to do with this. Why don't you call the school and find out from the department that takes care of what he's looking for, what would the time frame be? Yeah, and, and, to, and explain to him your urgency of when they repair it, how long would they keep it for? Then we can decide what, which way to go with that. And Just make them aware we're not like normal towns that have <laughs> two or three <laughs> animal <laughs> control vehicles. <laughs> okay. We have one. You know, because I mean, we definitely don't have the money to have it done, uh, outsource it, and we definitely, well, we really appreciate Valley Tech uh, doing it for us, but we also. Well, I, and uh, I just want to um, explain, I haven't submitted this yet. Right. In the past, I will let you know that when we have had body work done, mm -hmm. the estimates from BVT actually have come in higher than some of our local body repair shops. So mm -hmm. I don't even know that this will be the lowest bid. Okay. Our lowest proposal, but um, I All didn't right. even, you know, if it was going to be a problem with the timing, I didn't even want to waste their time or ours and send it in. But I can make a phone call and speak with the, um, yeah. the department. Yeah, and if we can get it done cheaper okay. elsewhere, then I'll definitely Thank kill some. But I did want the board to know that the department head did fill out the form as requested. Um, with respect to the highway surveyor, a couple of weeks ago we had talked about some outstanding items and the board. Um, was going back and forth about whether to meet with him as a whole or whether just two board members should meet with him. Yeah. Um, the board had asked me at that time to um, reach out to him and see what he preferred. Okay. I still haven't heard back from him, um, okay. so I'm not sure how you'd like to proceed on that. I have noticed oh. that some of the issues on that punch list are being addressed, so yeah. I'm not quite sure if maybe his plan is to just address those items. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I mean, there's not much. We can't make him do meet with us. Mm -hmm. huh? Greater concern is chapter 90. Yeah. Addressing mm -hmm. chapter 90. That's, that's the big issue. Oh, I know. I, line painting? I I've, I've asked. I've to just... My opinion, line painting is a waste of money, but it has to be done. I mean, because we, we all know you stay to the right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you'd like me to continue? with him and try to get some yeah, data. See, yeah, okay. especially about the chapter 90 and the other stuff, I mean, we don't want to micromanage and, and he seems to be doing okay at it, so, you know, but the chapter 90 is a big concern for the, um, for our budget, you know, as you know, so. Okay, and um, the last issue is the MES water. Um, I didn't get in, I was at a, a conference with Mr. Raposa for most of the day, but when I got in at about three o'clock, um, Mr. Ferrari had sent me an email, or copied me on an email that he had sent to the other engineer, Mr. Proventure. Um, so they, at the board's request, at the last, as a meeting two weeks ago, they have made contact with each other, um, and they appear to be having some discussion. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, the board's final decision was to have the two engineers work together, put their heads together, and see if they could come up with a mutually acceptable proposal to present to DEP and the board. So they have been in contact. Um, so I did reply to, to Mr. Ferrari, thanking him for the email, um, advising that it was my hope that he would have something to present to the board by the board's next meeting on October 7th, and that will have already be run by DEP. Um, so that's where that stands. Um, however, right before I came into the meeting this evening, Mr. Lahr brought some additional information to my attention, so I'll turn it over to him and let him explain what he 
I advised. Know, at our last meeting, we had a uh, discussion with uh, Small Waters, and at that time, um, I really didn't have much information to uh, ask her certain questions uh, on levels and um, how we ended up where we are today with the water being out of compliance. And uh, I have this for the, for the people there. So after doing an investigation and talking to Bob in, in depth about these water, come to find out that it's, uh, there were certain things that weren't followed. There were certain things that were changed. I just want the board to go over and read this. Um, it's uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory. I recommend after reading this and talking to Bob, I would go to plan B. Um, that's my take on this. Um, basically what happened was when a processor system is built, it's basically laid out in four levels. You got low, medium, high, and at compliance. And what happened was we started going, on our levels started raising, and these are the numbers that these people took, and there was a gentleman there that takes samples all the time, so the numbers don't lie. Um, and what happened was, not to go into too depth, it started raising, and um, we went out of low, and we ended up in medium and nobody was um, called upon us. So what happened was, we ended up with a runaway freight train. It ended up getting out of hand, they couldn't bring it back, and that's where we are today. <coughs> so with that and all my investigation, um, I do have a, a way of fixing it, and a guarantee, but I'd like the board to look at it, read it, and see what their input is on it. Um, some of the stuff is very disturbing, the way it was handled. Um, that could be fixed by a maintenance procedure program, which will be put in place if the board uh, recommends it, which I highly do. Um, with that said, um, read it. I can't go really into more detail than that. Um, basically, there is nothing wrong with the tank that we put in. Um, that was a... Uh, wasn't a, a proper, how can I say, assumption on, on wastewater's part. Um, we got another email, all of us, that it was nothing wrong with the tank. And then we got another email saying they don't know why it's doing what it's doing. My point is that when we have um, an operator in our school, no matter what company it is, and they're having problems, they should call for support. They should call for help. They should call on the secretary and say, I need some help because it's going out of compliance. With that said, it wasn't done. So it is what it is now because it wasn't done properly. And if it was done properly, we wouldn't be in where we are right now. So with that said, read it, and then maybe we can make a, um, <clears throat> um, have Bob come in next week and discuss it with him. I mean, next board meeting, discuss it with them, but this is something that we need to address right away. We can't lay on this. We, the, the longer you wait, the worse it gets. So, um, And this is the attachment from Bob? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Because there's no name on it. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, I just want to be sure. This, this is something that I went back and forth with Bob for, for, for a couple of hours, getting information, him giving me information, and this is our conclusion that we came up with. And with the numbers that we had and this and that, um, the only thing I can say is um, it is an easy fix. It's not a difficult fix. It's not a, a complex system. It's a pretty simple system. But all I'm saying to the board is um, we need to address it very fast. Because I like to see this thing uh, back to its normal range because I don't think the kids should be put to burden. Mr. Lara, when you refer to plan B, uh, are you referring to option two, the replacement of the new sand? That's record? correct. See, what happens is, and not to get into the detail, if they go, like the last meeting that we had where they said they fluffed the bed, and that's because they have a lot of heavies in it, and the heavies can't come out. It's like a sand filter. With that said, um, with the labor intends to regenerate the media inside those sand filters, 
and the labor costs, it's because it's labor intense, you're better off just dropping the sand right out, putting new sand in, find your baseline and go from there. That way you regulate everything back to normal. He guarantees that he can bring us back to compliance, back to a low range, and then with that said, he would put a maintenance schedule in which they have to follow, and then what happens is if you go out of compliance, it automatically tells them to have to call the executive secretary and bring in support, period. Okay. All right. Now, because they are, do they work for the school? Do they work for us? Who, who well, right now, something? Small Waters works for us. We, you know I mean? They, yeah. they take care of our mm -hmm. water. Yeah. Okay. So if they have a problem and they're out of their compliance, it starts raising the levels, then they should immediately pick up the phone and call Helen and get the engineer in there to find out what's going on. That was not done. Well, they, right. they, not to interrupt, but they, they were working with another engineer, right. keep in mind, that the board did approve. So, I have, not that I'm defending no, or I'm supporting saying, Swiss, but right. they were working with an engineer and a call was made to an engineer, just not the one that knew how to fix the problem. That's right. correct. And, and also, <laughs> So I believe the executive secretary was not informed. No. Well, she not should have because okay. she is our ears and eyes, and she should have been informed about this. Right. Okay, now, so we don't break open meeting law. Yeah. So that's let's, all I have to say about where we are. I just have one question. What does Swiss get for the basic maintenance a year? Do you know off the, mm, top, off of the top of my head? I, I can't recall. I want to say it's around... Well, we add a lot in for the, the lab yeah, testing, testing. Yeah. Um, so to them fine. strictly. I want to say it's around 10, give or take. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I guess I would need clarification from the board because the direction to me two weeks ago was that the engineers were going to work together. Yeah. So in an email that I just sent off to Bob, I reiterated the fact that that was the board's request. Yeah. So is, is the board now telling me that they're willing to look at Bob's proposal alone and to disregard Mr. Preventure's Well, I do remember Mr. Preventure said 20,000. If a guy will guarantee the fix, go with it. He's guaranteeing it because I'm not going to. And he guarantees it. Okay, I just want clarification <laughs> and, that that's and what And he I'm... wants to do it without spending thousands of dollars of our money, which I like that idea. So by just so you know. So now we should actually get off the subject because right. <laughs> we're going to be you, Thank you very answer. much. You're welcome. Okay, um, under old business, we have fire station two. Um, last meeting, we spoke about a uh, proposal of a building up on Main Street, and um, uh, I'd like to. I'd, I'm looking for a motion to. Um, allow the chief and, and the captain of, of fire to um, speak with Marilyn and, and speak with the uh, finance committee and, and anyone else that would, would be of some help for financial um, direction on the building and, uh, and to free us up from the burden of, and the, uh, I mean, we're, we're basically hanging from a cliff right now with, with uh, garage space for two of our uh, very important vehicles. So, and if, if that uh, lease ev is ever compromised in any way, we've got two vehicles that cannot be out in the cold, will be out in the cold. So, um, you know, the chief and, and, and the captain have, have taking steps forward to uh, look to prevent a, you know, a, a very bad uh, condition as, as I just stated. So, uh, and if, if we could, you know, just not that we're approving a building or, or, or anything, or even approving the use of a certain parcel of land, but at least give him the, the blessing and, and whoever he needs to work with him to pursue this uh, this project, and and it would be um, a, a great step forward for for all of our um, EMS and and possibly municipal offices. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't have the funds or, or 
you know, to back us to, to do a feasibility study on what type of a municipal building. But if we start with a small building with, with um, the possibility of being able to, to add on to it uh, in the future, once we know the real direction, but in the meantime, um, you know, I, I feel, you know, speaking for myself, that it is important to um, take steps forward to protect our fire equipment before um, we're forced to do something that could cost us an uh, extreme amount more of money than, than we could spend now. So, so I agree. Thank you. We had a very productive uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago to outline the reasons why we need it and the steps we have to take. But it's very time consuming to move to the next step without the desire of the Board of Selectmen to tell me to do that. Right. Uh, I've looked at some cost already, and I'm pretty confident I can put together a price relatively quick for the entire construction of that phase one mm -hmm. uh, within a matter of weeks. So I'd like to meet with finance to determine which way we could possibly go, which would be most productive to the town and save us the most money, right. whether it be to go out to bond or do a debt exclusion, uh, whatever we have to do to make it work, that's what I'd be looking for. Right. Okay. So would I have a motion on the floor for, for I'll to make do that, I'll make that motion that we uh, proceed to letting the chief uh, go to Maryland and start getting the numbers and find out where, the, where we stand and uh, talk to the finance committee um, to pursue the uh, phase one of uh, the firehouse. And, and again, the property on Main Street that we're talking about is adjacent to the old cemetery over between Chestnut Hill and Main Street. Correct. So, Does it necessarily have to include that property? No, it doesn't have to include that property, but the property that, that was proposed because it has two accesses to two main roads in town. Well, two out of probably the three main roads. I, I, <laughs> I don't see any problem in, in pursuing that you need, you need to understand the cost. Uh, so that's the, 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 you know, logical step. And, and also to, to just remember, as you know, uh, right now we're renting, leasing, however you want to put it. So we're, every year the, the $7,000 is never coming back. Ultimately, mm -hmm. the town residents are had the right. It, 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 once we have proposals and everything at town meeting, when, when everything's all said and done and we have drawn, then it'll go to a town meeting with a final vote. And then yeah, it's out of let's, our hands at that point. Let's see what we got. Yeah. I second John. If motion. we don't give him the opportunity to pursue, we'll never know. I second John's motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, can I just add, would it be possible? because that's the way you know, the wheels get going. That I know the drive through or actually the pull out is is what safe. Mm -hmm. Is there enough room on that property instead of just doing a bay for two vehicles but longer to have a smaller vehicle so you might have to so you might be able to house more yes. so that in the future, me thinking, if you can get four vehicles because you've been longer and you might have your I don't even know what the ambulance or the forestry. I don't even know if they have the forestry truck anymore. But, um, and then that we could almost take a bay away from the current station to make more space for what you're talking about and storage and those kind of things. We can. I don't have the map in front of me. But I'm just saying, you know, could that there be is. a possibility? Absolutely, because. Because I, I honestly feel strongly that unless we do something about this building, right. we're going to need space right. for our our business aspect of the town. No, no and if we do, I don't want to consume that right. space with, you know, a fire department that's right. manned, you know. I agree. With, we right. have the, the workers here, you know what I'm saying? It's the most yeah. amount of people being affected along with our public. If I remember correctly, it's like 160 feet deep. The proposed garage is only 60 feet deep. Mm -hmm. That still leaves us at least 100 feet deep. Uh, or available space. So we could add another 20 feet to that building with no difficulty at all. 
to put in. Okay. And you, you might be able, I mean, you might have to, Good. like, you know, in your driveway, someone has to right. leave to pull everyone through it. and have everyone facing the right way for when the emergency comes. Exactly. But we could almost have it longer to house more okay. so that we wouldn't need a new fire station. Exactly. We wouldn't need that phase two, exactly. where it would, might be a phase one for our business aspect. You could realistically do that. Okay. Um, that's just something I'm, no, you I'm like, you know, I'm trying okay. to figure things out. I was in Franklin on Saturday, I was looking at their new fire station, drive in, drive out. It was absolutely wonderful. Franklin? Franklin. Okay. Yeah, they have. I think Bellingham's Bellingham has two. two. Right. right. They have That's a, both facing. All of the new fire stations constructed now are all drive in, drive out. They no longer back in. Right. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, um, next under Can new. I post something on the old business? Yeah. You had mentioned the Chestnut Hill Community Center. Mm -hmm. um, I was in correspondence with um, Diane Lamro mm -hmm. because of um, the centennial. Yes. So in her email, she gave me some dates. So I'll just put them out there, whether oh, okay. we want to discuss it tonight yep. or, or later. But it would be um, in October, the dates would be for the Saturday Selectman meet and greet um, coffee is, let's see. Their first choice is Saturday the 26th. Okay. The next one would be Saturday the 19th. The what? 19th. 19th. And the last would be Saturday the 5th. All right. Well, October 5th, I, I have a, a function that I have to go to already, so I, I'm out on that one. Mr. Chairman, um, the cable access um, cameraman has told me that the only day he would be able to do is um, October 26th. That's fine with me. Huh? I'm out of town. For the weekend. I am? Yeah, I am. My hotel's booked away going. It's Halloween weekend, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, see, I don't pay you attention to that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just take the candy. Yeah, no, we, uh, I'm out of town. I leave Friday. I won't be back until Sunday yeah. night. Okay. I mean, you can do it without me if that's the only date. Right. But I'm not in town. Okay. All right. Well, shoot for the 26th, then, right? really don't have a choice. I guess so. I Unless you wanted to go into November. I don't think you want to wheel it white down. <coughs> down the road, do you? November, we, we have town meeting. Yeah, we'll be busy with other stuff then. <laughs> November. Yeah, we may as well, I guess. You don't care, Jennifer? I shouldn't say it. it's not that I don't no, care. No, I mean. But I'm understanding yeah, if yeah. that's the only date and we want to get it in the fall, I'd rather spark the conversation. Yep. Then, okay. Um, and it's a, a, a meeting without vote. We're just there for open discussion. Right. Yep. No motions or votes, then the right. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's just to get everybody's yep. no, I don't uh, know. input. I just don't want anything to happen when I'm not around. Well, I mean, technically, nope. it's a it's a posted meeting. It is. So, so you it wouldn't be illegal for them to take a vote. It wouldn't be illegal to. Yeah. But it's not, we're not bringing anything like that to the table, though, on the agenda. So. And hopefully the uh, fire chief brings the uh, proposal down there too to present that. So if there's any questions or answers. Uh, civil engagement. That's right, I'm today. Yep. Okay. And so that's uh, nine to eleven again, same hours. Yeah, that's, okay. that seems pretty good on a Saturday. Okay. They can take a two-hour break of raking leaves. And Come have a coffee. <laughs> All right. So next on new business, we have uh, Chief Landry and um, Helen are constantly using their personal credit cards to purchase office items or anything that the town might need. So it ends up being. Um, Time consuming and it costs cost administrative dollars because uh, they have to submit vouchers and then and then Marilyn has to go through and, and then Lisa has to go through some extra work that that should that could be avoided by us having um, a town credit card. So as long as there's a PO number or whatever system we use when we're making a purchase, then Lisa and Marilyn will know exactly what was bought for who and then boom the bills get paid quick and a lot less uh, man hours are wasted uh, so with that said uh, 
There is a credit card policy, uh, three pages long, well, two and a half, with an area of a lot of signatures. So, uh, I guess uh, to, Helen would keep it under lock and key in her office, and only a handful of, of uh, town officials would, would have access to it. Um, I mean, anybody could request something to be purchased with it, but only a few people would have the actual authority to sign or, or uh, give the PIN number over the phone to, to a vendor. So, uh, I don't know, I don't want to beat a dead horse. It's a, it's a long policy. If anybody would like to read it, it's, it's here at the town hall. Um, so, I'll make, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we proceed with the credit card application for uh, the town needs under the supervision of the executive secretary. And, and Marilyn has actually, in the past, our, our town accountant, for those that don't know who Marilyn is, um, in the past she has, you know, not really been thrilled about it, and, but she definitely agrees that, that it would save um, you know, the, the, lots of time for the administration and, you know, the burden of the people using their, you know, private uh, credit cards. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Okay. All right. Final public forum. Or, or members forum. Yeah, I got a call today yep. about street lights in town being out. Who's responsible? I actually received that email uh, late this afternoon and I um, replied that I would take care of that first thing in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Usually when I, see, I just call Kristen and leave a message, but I don't personally don't know who really calls right. the National Grid, but, right. <laughs> Do we know but she, she takes care of that, whoever she calls. Do we know how many uh, street lights we have in town? I have all that information in my office. There's a, a green energy issue thing. Now I would like to speak with you at some time about mm -hmm. if you know what's going on at the elementary school. Yep. If those are all incandescent. Uh, the trend now is to switch to uh, LED. LED and, uh, well, we have Jim. Uh, from National Grid, he's actually a resident in Millville, but I deal with him a lot on on projects outside all over the state, and so he's on that department in, at National Grid. What I learned today get some help with that. Yeah. So he, you know, because I notice a lot of cities and towns that do have LED street lights now, and it, um, it's you know there there are incentives out there still from the federal government to, to switch over. So if you know that would help if that would if LEDs would lower our monthly um, lease for these street lights. They last longer too, right? Well, they definitely yeah. last. Yeah, the maintenance is down, and and then the the disposal of the bed. Of, you know, we could apply those savings not, to our grant. These are hazardous materials that are up there. Besides, yeah. they have to be properly disposed. Right. So. <laughs> Joe, have you spoken directly with our our rep who handles the street lights with our government rep? Uh, no. No, I can get you his name. He's he's very helpful. Yeah. Anyway, uh, final public call. No money. So our next regular meeting is Monday, October seventh, two thousand thirteen, at seven p.m. Right here at the Longfellow Center. And uh, thank you, everybody, and have a good thank evening. You. Second. Second. All in favor. All right. Oh, I'm a button. You haven't, you haven't done, uh,